Behind the idyllic backdrop of their Orange County home and the charming smile of their boy wonder, the Anaheim Ducks have found themselves in a pretty sticky situation. And that situation is... they can't play hockey. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh. But it is true that the Ducks are having a really hard time in the NHL right now. After 15 games, they're at a record of 4-10-1, with zero regulation wins and the joint lowest points in the NHL with just nine. And a loss may suggest more on paper than a game shows, but with Anaheim it seems to be the opposite. Only five of their 11 losses have been within two goals of their opponent, the worst being a deficit of six against the New York Islanders and only three of their total games have had a higher shots count than shots against. If we were to take their current points count and estimate a total for the end of the season, we would get a minimum of 15, assuming no regulation wins, and a maximum of 31, assuming all regulation wins. This is obviously an extreme result based off of a crude estimate, but it truly highlights just how bad the start of the 2023 season has been for the Anaheim Ducks. The question is though, why is it so bad? It's no secret that the Ducks are in the process of a franchise rebuild after the final page closed on an era gone by with the retirement of Ryan Getzlaff last season, as well as new manager Pat Verbeek taking on his role at the beginning of the year. And part of that has been the commitment to growing and developing young talent alongside some veterans here and there, with faces like Trevor Zegras and Mason McTavish being set to be the stars of this team, they're joined alongside the likes of Dmitry Kulikov, John Klingberg, Frank Vetrano, Pavel Regenda, Ryan Strom, and Nathan Bolio, who are all in their first season with the Anaheim Ducks. And of their main roster of players, nine were selected in the first round of their respective drafts, five of which were by Anaheim over the years, showing a dedication not only to their own prospects, but an eye for seeking talent elsewhere on the field. However, talent does not mean results. And generally with a new group of players, you need a lot of development and synergization to get to a point where you're gonna find consistent success. And it's pretty clear that with the Ducks right now, that development is still a work in progress. The Ducks currently sit at the worst in the NHL for three major stats. Goals for to goals against differential at 27, goals against average at 4.23, and shots against at 587. With these statistics, the Ducks are currently on track to let in 350.14 goals in the regular season, a number which hasn't been matched since the Sharks in 1996. This is a pretty bad look for John Gibson, for whom his current individual GAA of 4.47 is the worst of his entire career, and his current save percentage of 0.888 is the first time in any NHL regular season that he has dipped below 0.900. But this isn't something we can just plant on the goaltender as easy as a scapegoat as that could be. Gibby is still making some really impressive saves when he can, it more comes down to the communication and the decision-making of the defense. And this is the primary complaint being discussed with the Ducks right now. The defense looks rough. The highest number of points on a D-man for Anaheim right now is Klingberg with seven, a mere third of Eric Carlson, who currently leads the league for points. Even the Canucks, who have also been struggling defensively this season, have 13 points for Quinn Hughes, and that's considering he was out for an injury. In previous seasons with the Ducks, Cam Fowler found on four separate occasions a five game point streak. This season, he currently only has one point. In the last season in which the Ducks qualified for playoffs, four defensemen scored over 30 points. So far this season, only Klingberg is on track to achieve this. Even last season, the highest points total by a defenseman was Fowler with 23. And of course, we can't judge the D just by the number of points that they're achieving. Not everyone can be an offensive defenseman and not everybody should be either. Another thing that we can look at to judge their success is the number of blocks they're making. In Anaheim, all six main defensemen, not including the injured Drysdale, have blocked more than 10 shots, with the highest being Kulikov at 28. Overall, the Ducks have blocked 203 shots sounds fine. Now let's look at the Jets, who are the team to have led in the fewest goals this season so far. They have seven players in total who have blocked over 10 shots, with six of them being the defensemen. In fact, five of them have blocked over 20 shots. Overall, the Jets have blocked 196 shots, seven fewer than the Ducks. But those numbers on their own mean nothing. We have to consider how many shots are even being taken against these two teams. I've already highlighted that the Ducks have had 587 shots taken against them, the worst in the league. The Jets, meanwhile, have had just 431, a difference of 856, and that puts them at the sixth best in the league. This means that the impact of the players' blocks have different weights. 
Brendan Dillon and Dmitry Kulikov, who each sit at the top of their team's blocks, have a relatively similar impact as one another, with Dillon having blocked 5.1% of the shots taken against the Jets, and Kulikov having blocked 4.77% of those onto the Ducks. But when we look at, say, the fourth highest blocking D-man on each team, we have Josh Morrissey blocking 4.6% of shots and John Klingberg blocking just 2.9%. In fact, the top five highest blocking defensemen on the Jets are all within two blocks of each other. On the Ducks, this number drops to a difference of 14. What these numbers tell us in context is that for the Ducks, there is a far less consistent performance between their defensemen than we see on other teams. It also tells us that there are other players on the team who are filling some of those defensive responsibilities. For example, Vetrano and Silverberg both have over 10 shots blocked. Meanwhile, if you look on the Jets, there aren't any forwards that have blocked more shots than any of their main six defensemen. If they're having so many more shots taken against them despite blocking a similar number to a top defensive team, then that implies they're doing a poor job of forcing turnovers and denying puck possession to the opponent team, who simply have the option to take more shots. And these issues are not only prevalent at even strength. The Ducks special teams have been struggling. It doesn't help that they seem to dig their own grave with how many penalty minutes they accrue. Their penalty minutes versus penalty minutes against differential is 50, putting them at the second worst in the league. Against a league average of 50 penalty kills, the Ducks have had to kill 56 and they're not very good at it. With teams on average having 11 power play goals under their belts, the Ducks have conceded 20 goals to opponents when trying to kill a penalty. In these scenarios too, they've only once scored their own goal, half of the league average. This means that officially they have a 64.29% likelihood of successfully killing a penalty. That's not even two thirds of the time. Meanwhile, the rest of the NHL is finding that success 78.37% of the time. This is a huge disparity statistically, but it's also really concerning given how many penalty minutes Anaheim have been gathering. If they can't control their losses when they have a penalty, they're gonna end up donating more and more points as the season goes on. And their power play doesn't look much better. Remember that 11 average power play goal statistic? The Ducks have scored four. And while on a power play, they've let in three goals. Teams the Ducks have played against have almost scored as many goals on a Ducks power play as the Ducks have themselves. Yeah, all of these issues are indicative of the Ducks needing more development. Development on set plays or communication, or even adaptation so they can play into uncomfortable situations. This team is filled with really skilled talent. And the individual prowess of these players can be seen in individual plays or the deking shootout goals. But to be greater than the sum of their parts, those skills have to be merged and communicated into something fluid, adaptable, and focused. After Gutzlaff retired from the Anaheim Ducks at the end of last season, the team lost their captain. And while they have their three alternates, Ultimately, they don't have that one central figurehead of guidance and strength. Players like Zegras or McTavish or Drysdale are being looked to as the future of this team, but they're not in any position to be leading it. To get their full potential, they're going to need that veteran hand. I don't doubt the choices of Fowler, Henrik, and Silverberg donning the A's on their jerseys. In fact, I think they're good choices, but there is something notable about the team that looks lost on the ice being the one that doesn't have a captain to steer them. I think the future is the focus for the Anaheim Ducks, especially when you consider the fact that they drafted three defensemen this year. You can tell that they know what their flaws are and that they want to patch them up over time. Perhaps it's unreasonable to expect the Anaheim Ducks to be an impressive team this season, despite being a collection of impressive players. This is the beginning of a new chapter for them and there will be brighter days ahead, maybe even in this season. But for now, they may be waiting yet another season for a chance to lift the Stanley Cup once again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I've had a rough couple of weeks, which is why I haven't done a Pucific in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna be getting that back when I can, but I really, really wanted to make this video about Anaheim and go into some of the issues with an actual team. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought. I would love to make more videos in this format, but for now, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.